Well, I, if I'm not mistaken, if I understood it correctly, this will not be a commercial for Emacs or for Vim or any specific editor, but it will simply be more of a plaidoyer for, uh, for a method of uh, optimization of workflow uh, presented by Miro, uh, who uh, will talk now for about uh, 45 minutes. Uh, we will still leave uh, some time for questions later. Um, so, uh, give a, a warm welcome for Miro. Thank you. My name is Miroslav Shedivy, and this is how my keyboard looks like. Anyone else using the same standard US keyboard layout? Quite a few, very nice. So, it's a, I like, like uh, this uh, keyboard layout very much because uh, it's so simple. It allows me to to program in uh, programming languages I need and write most uh, texts I need uh, from simple English texts uh, until complicated, uh, more complicated names of uh, places like who has been already to this Welsh city or town. Uh, and it uh, contains the whole ASCII and uh, has on, on not more than two keys, uh, two characters per key which can you uh, reach uh, by uh, shift. So it's uh, quite simple and very useful to type most text uh, in English. Ako náhle však chcem napísať moje priezvisko, ktoré je šedivý, je na začiatku 6 s mekčeniom, y s dlžňom, tak to na americkej klávesnici nedostanem a preto potrebujem slovenskú klávesnicu. Na slovenskej klávesnici sú všetky tieto znaky navyše, ale nie je to kverty, je to kverc. E, hore čísla sa robia so shiftom a čo je problém, že všetky ostatné znaky po pravej strane sú úplne inak, takže keď chcem programovať, nefunguje to dosť dobre. A v tej anderen zajte viem man auf der Deutschen, das hat auch schreiben will, wo jetzt alle umleute und das scharfe es da sind, die sind wiederum praktisch, wenn man es auf Deutsch etwas schreiben will. Aber wie, äh, wer von euch, die mich jetzt gerade verstehen, äh, wissen, dass es äh, seit dem letzten Jahr auch das große Scharfe es gibt? Ja, und wie schreibt ihr das auf euren deutschen Tastatur? <lacht> Shift und äh, Scharfe es ist Fragezeichen. So, also das funktioniert nicht immer. Ist auch Quertz und wie bei der Slowakischen genauso sind äh, jetzt die Sonderzeichen, also die, die ganze Interpunktion äh, rechts ist komplett anders. Also da, wenn man programmiert, muss man sich wieder neue Sachen merken. Und ich habe jetzt noch nicht alle äh, Tasten gezeigt, die jetzt noch mit dem Alt-GR zu erreichen sind. Äh, Česká klávesnica je velice podobná do Slovenské. Äh, Navyše je tam Ersch s Hačkem, nebo s Kroužkem, äh, co äh, je, takže v podstate môžete psáť i na Slovenské, na České, äh, je tam dosť dosť podobných vecí, ale také, když chcete napsať čísla na českej klávesnici, tak je treba je delať se shiftem. Est-ce que quelqu'un a déjà écrit sur un clavier français? C'est ni quertz, c'est ni querti, c'est azerti, la M il est ailleurs, le point on le fait avec un shift, et les autres touches sont tout à fait ailleurs. Moi j'ai appris à utiliser le VI sur le clavier français il y a, il y a 18 ans, À l'époque, je ne comprenais pas comment quelqu'un pouvait faire, construire un éditeur de ce type où les touches ne correspondent à rien. Après, j'ai trouvé QWERTY et ça allait encore euh, un peu mieux. Le teclado castellano, que vous connaissez, euh, contient euh, lettres comme euh, N avec tilde ou puntos de, euh, de signes de exclamation ou de interrogation abiertos que nécessitez au início de, de, una, de una phrase. Uh, tá, uh, polská klaviatúra je uh, bardzo podobná do, polské, do americkánskej, uh, s ružnicou, že ak potrebujete písať všetky tie kropky, krensky, uh, iné znaky, chcete písať do kogož, do šena živá, ak Žegož Brenčiš, či Kievi, že Mieška v Frontiš, že Vošica povia dvenko vody, tak je potreba polskej klaviatúry a no, no. Ta stiera italiana, la stessa cosa, come la ta stiera eh, esp eh, spagnola. Eh, so, lamento che le lettere accentuate non, non ho trovato una, una maniera come scrivere eh, te lettere maiuscule eh, con accenti, ma apparamente la apparamente eh, abbastanza semplice. Eh, Post svenska anvendermo Ahmed Ring, O magyar ABC-ben kettős élés ékezét található, és kvankám Esperanto, ez a stre internácia lingvo, aukau existas kelkai tre speciálai literói. Ve türkcse de kücsük noktale ívek, bújük noktasis ívar. No, kücsük, kücsük, si. Ja, and we have only scratched the surface. So you see, we have just tried to type in a few European languages, and our keyboard is already a real mess.
If you want to type and switch the keyboard layouts each time you want to type in another language uh, and you have to switch uh, these keyboard layouts, you are not going to program because you cannot remember where all these braces and other special characters, uh, double quotes uh, and other characters uh, are. Uh, so how can we type in more than one language? Switching between keyboard layouts is not an option. Scrolling in character maps uh, works maybe for some very special emoji Chinese uh, character if it is only one uh, from time to time, but not if you are typing uh, fluently in, uh, in another language. Also remembering all the Unicode uh, code points uh, with uh, all the, the alt and the number combinations is uh, also not an option. Fortunately, in the 80s, on some Unix terminals, there was a special compose key. Does anyone remember the compose key? Yeah. Nowadays, uh, after MS-DOS uh, took over, the whole hardware uh, marked uh, and the old compost key already disappeared. But uh, maybe this is a solution. How does the compost key work? You don't have to play piano, so you need only one finger. Uh, and you have to type a sequence of three uh, keys. The first is always the compost key and then two other keys that in, at the end will make your the letter you want, uh, the character you want, appear. So for example, if you want uh, to write in German an uh, umlaut, umlaut, you remember, umlaut, it looks like a double quote. So you re remember everywhere where you want to type umlaut, even if it is in French word like Citroën, um, you type compose, double quotes, and the uh, character. If you want to type in French with accent aigu, it's a simple quote. If you want uh, accent graph, it's a big quote. And there are other, all, all other combinations. For example, for the uh, German SZ, it's uh, compose SS. And if you want the, uh, the uppercase uh, um, uh, SZ, it's a compose and then shift SS. So actually you don't really have to type a lot of, uh, a lot of characters and I find it very intuitive to remember all the combinations uh, you need. There are also many other uh, characters that you can type with it. For example, if you need ellipses, three dots. If you type three dots, it will give you three dots that is not exactly what you want. If you type con uh, compose and then two dots, it will, like compose dot dot, it will give you uh, the three dots. Even on the US keyboard, you don't have um, Euro uh, let, uh, character for the Euro currency. It's composed equals E, like it looks like like a Euro sign. So you have to just uh, remember or get used to, if you don't really need all of these uh, characters, to, to get used to to few uh, characters you need. And then you can just stick with your US keyboard layout and not change and not use uh, some other uh, keyboard layouts. Um, all this is defined. You don't have to define anything. It is already in this file. This file contains over 6,000 uh, rows, 6,000 lines, with the um, combination of the three characters or more characters you need. And you just, to get inspired, you can just uh, have a look at this uh, file and uh, you will see what uh, combinations uh, are used. There are even some funny uh, characters like uh, colon and a parenthesis, it's like smiley. If you type less than and three, it's a heart. If you type CCCP, it will print the communist symbol. Um, if you want to define your own characters, like if you, if you in your work uh, job uh, or in your hobbies, you have to type a lot of uh, Unicode characters that are not uh, in this uh, standard compose. You can define your own uh, .x compose uh, file uh, in the same format. And then you can, for example, as an idea, if you uh, type in Greek, Sometimes, and you want to type alpha, you can define something like compose G A. It will type lowercase alpha, compose G, shift A is the uppercase alpha, and uh, other characters. Or if you want to type in Cyrillic or other, you, you just have to find out uh, what works for you. So this is how compose key works. We are still missing the compose key. There is no compose key on your keyboard, but there are plenty of other keys that you are probably not using every day. Uh, for example, on uh, my keyboard, I usually um, give, uh, assign compose key to the right window key or to menu key. If you have a modern uh, uh, ThinkPad, uh, you can you have uh, on the bottom uh, right uh, in the row there is a print screen you probably don't use every day, so you can remap this key to to the compose key. And uh, in this file, in the, um, there is a list of all characters that can be mapped to compose key, and you, all, everything you have to do is set XKB map, uh, US or 
the keyboard layout you are using. You can do this even with your German or French or Polish keyboard layout and minus option and compose and then the name of the of the key you want to use. So this is how we can type in most European Latin-based uh, alphabet uh, languages uh, that uh, what we want. But when we are already hacking our keyboard, we could already touch another key. Which one is it? I found it on some chat <laughs> a few years ago. So which key is it? Caps lock. lock, right. What can we do with caps lock that is preventing you from logging since over 20 years? We can, hmm? You can break it out, but if you are typing with old, I cannot type with uh, touch type, but if I have already my fingers here and caps lock is something that I am using quite often, like not caps lock, but the key, I can, I can reach it uh, quite easily. Uh, how about uh, making in the uh, control? So because the control is quite far and if we remap our con uh, caps lock to control, we just uh, find this uh, in this uh, same file, there, there are all the remaps uh, that are available. And then our set XKB map, we just uh, add to our compose, we add the uh, caps uh, control modifier and our caps lock works like a control. Okay, but we are not still not finished, otherwise I wouldn't be standing here, because we can do even more. Out of our caps lock, we can get two keys at the same time. When you touch control, do you ever touch control, just hit it? Yeah. Maybe, but... <laughs> <laughs> Others, maybe not. It means that if you, if you, usually control is the key that you press, and then you press another key. Uh, yeah, but there is, uh, how about using, mapping it to escape, because escape is, on the other side, is a key that you are hitting. You are never press escape and uh, press another key. So if I just touch it, like, like hit it, it's uh, escape, and when I uh, press it and hold it and press something else, it's control. It works. There is a program for it in, for Linux, uh, but for other operating systems, uh, you can find certainly an alternative. For example, the program Xscape that is done exactly for that. And if we run in our init files uh, the Xscape uh, with uh, the command um, with this uh, caps lock mapped to Xscape, uh, the key will work as a control as long as it is pressed. But as soon as we release it, it will be mapped to uh, Xscape. So when usually typing, I'm using it since over one year, and it works uh, perfectly well. So we are ready. We just create smaller stickers that don't cover more than one key. Uh, you put these uh, two lines into your uh, init files, and we are done. And we are ready to start our journey with the VI editor. Anyway, is anyone using here VI or Vim? Occasionally, or all the time? Occasionally, most, OK. And as the main editor? Ah, great. So I don't have to explain a lot of the <laughs> history. But uh, VI and the predecessors are around here longer than most of us here, probably. Uh, Vim, the editor that you probably have installed on your uh, computer, is, uh, comes from the beginning of the 90s. The author, Bram Mullenar, uh, wrote it on Amiga and then ported it to most uh, other uh, operating systems. Uh, we are starting at the end. There is NeoVim. Who knows NeoVim? Um, it's a new alternative that started a few years ago as a fork of uh, Vim uh, 7.4 and that is uh, maintained by a community and it's said that it's more open to, to updates, it's more community driven uh, project and they uh, activated uh, a few or they added a few new features before, uh, before Vim 8 came um, to the market or, or to the repositories. Uh, if you go a little bit uh, back, there is Stevie and Elvis, uh, parallel projects also from Amiga. Vim got inspired by Stevie, uh, but they disappeared after a certain time. Vim is everywhere now. And then we, when we go back, 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 there is VI from Unix. It is probably what you still know. NVI is a text editor, is a clone of, of VI uh, that didn't change much, that is still available on most systems. And we are coming back, back, back to the ad editor. Who knows ad editor? Uh, using it every day? <laughs> One. Uh, I think uh, just today, tonight, uh, there should be an ad uh, workshop. Tomorrow, I think. No, after, after this session, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay, so there, there is Matthias, uh, the guy who will pr uh, try to, to uh, teach you how to learn uh, ad, so I would really recommend it. I use it already sometimes, so I know it, but I would probably recommend it to learn uh, ad. Um, 
because add, why is what what is add? How it add looks like? It's a text editor, but linear text editor. Why is it, it is a linear text editor? Do you know these two guys? These are Re Dennis Ritchie, Ken Thompson. These are the authors of Unix. Without these two guys, no Unix, no Linux, no BSD, no C, no Mac OS, no Android, just Windows everywhere. <laughs> And you see, they are sitting in front of the PDP-11. PDP-11 is the big box, big uh, box uh, at, the, at the back of the of the room. It's the computer, and the two smaller desk, not desktops, like desks, uh, in front of them are the ASR33. And these are the way. This is the way how they communicated with the machine. So what you see, there is a keyboard, and there is no display, no smaller, bigger huge display, there is no display, but there is an infinite roll of paper in front of them with a printer. And this is how, in those times, the computers communicated with us. It means they, you, 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 you could write, type a comment, you could see it, and then the computer could just reply. And this is where terminals come from, where termin because this printer, it could just print line or several lines, but it, it couldn't just scroll back. It couldn't overwrite what, it, uh, what uh, came out. So the only thing, the only way to, to use, for example, cat to see a file was just cat, and then brrr, it printed the whole file, and you could read it. If you wanted to change something and then uh, reprint it, you just had to use another few meters of, uh, of paper. So that's why Ed was born, because this was an editor that you couldn't use on a very small, very, very, very uh, in small memory, but also at a very uh, slow connection. And this is how it looks like. Everything that is white background, it was me who typed it. Everything that's yellow background, it's computer that answered. Um, uh, every, you have to imagine every line came after each other, so it could be as well printed on this paper. Um, and uh, we, when we started from um, from the edit from uh, shell add, then if I want to type something new, I have to use a comment. A is the comment that appends line to the current uh, line position. Then I wrote uh, these two lines: "Hello world, everybody at uh, Gulash Program Yonacht. And then a dot was the end of my text input. After dot, it knew okay, these two lines are the new lines, the two lines that are coming that are have to be appended to my file. And then n is the comment that types the current line, prints the current line with the number of the line. So with n, I enter, and I could see 2 and the number, number of the, my line, 2 and uh, the line that I uh, printed as uh, last, and then uh, as I inserted as last. And then I do a, write another line, how are you today? And then with, there is n with a percent, and percent, you know it from VI, it is the whole file. So percent n means just print the whole file. You can do it with three lines. You are not going to do it with your whole source code of Unix. And then it printed the three lines. And then there are regular expression. There is a regular expression that comes that says uh, with uh, one s, it means in the first line, replace world by Gulash program Yanacht. Another comment, I don't have to see the result immediately. Another comment is 2D, it means delete the second line. And percent n, print it again. And if you see the, um, this uh, comment with the substitute, with the world uh, through, uh, replace it with a Gulash program uh, there were also comments that uh, acted on the whole file so with regular expression. So for example, you could tell, I want globally in the whole file, print everything with where this regular expression works. And this is this G slash RE, like a regular expression slash P, and this is where the word grab comes from comes from the ad editor. So at the end, we just write it to the file. It writes uh, 49 uh, bytes, quit, and that's all. So this is how uh, Unix worked uh, 50 years ago. So if you are writing a program that has many lines, imagine that you would have to type it with ad. Um, I really recommend to learn at least uh, the, the basics of ad, because when everything is broken on your computer, ad will always work. Um, uh, even if, for example, if you use VI uh, or Vim and you just uh, mess up your uh, VimRC, it will always help you to repair your VimRC and to get your Vim, Vim working because repairing VimRC with, by Vim is not really just self-operating appendix. It doesn't really work very well.
Uh, no, at the end I will show you a way how to not even not to come to this point because you will not going to break up uh, or to mess up uh, your VMRC. So this was 50 years ago. Then we are coming to the mid of uh, 70s with the ADM3A terminal, and this is where Bill Joy in 76 uh, wrote uh, VI4, and it's already visual because we have already a, di a display where we can see more at the same time, and the display is able to um, to redraw characters uh, at uh, any random position. This is how the keyboard. Uh, this, this is the keyboard layout of uh, this uh, terminal, and you see the arrows at the HA, HJKL keys. So that's why VI is using HJKL to move around. Um, and also the escape key. Yes, yes, control and escape. <laughs> control and escape is just next yeah. there. Okay, we can leave tab, tab where it is, but you have control and escape at the same, and I showed you even how to put control and escape uh, to a better position. Um, on the right side, uh, the keyboard looks a little bit different from the US standard keyboard layout that we know today, but uh, it's, uh, quite, it works quite well. So the HJKL, where it comes from, why was HJKL here? Is there a question? Next to which? Break, wrap, I don't know. I have never touched uh, this terminal, I just found the keyboard layout and there is a even source, I, I don't know. Does anybody know? Googling right now. <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> um, okay, so where does HJKL, why, why are arrows at HJKL? Um, we can start with H. What has H and left arrow in common? What happens if you hold control and hit H? It's backspace, right. What is uh, control and J? Line fit. It's line fit. So if you know ASCII, these are the thir first 32 characters of the ASCII below. 32, uh, position 32 is uh, space and there are all, all the rest, but this is <coughs> below 32. And maybe you recognize, in the first uh, column there, is, uh, there are the numbers. In the second column there is an ASCII character with a control, with a caret in front of it. Uh, which means this is the way how you can type this character, because the first 32 characters in ASCII are control characters, like backspace, like new line, like beep, like tap, like vertical tap, like, uh, and um, all these uh, characters you could type them with control. It takes the key you want to type, it ASCII, it's ASCII value, and then it subtracts 64. So, for example, A is uh, 65, uh, ASCII 65, minus 64, control A is uh, start of header. If someone tells you uh, that with control D you can just close uh, terminal or some text input, you look at the D is EOT, end of transmission. So, we are actually sending ASCII character 4, end of transmission. Uh, other thing that is probably quite well known is the 13th, is the M. If you open a Windows encoded file in uh, Linux, it will, at the end of each line, it will just so show carried M. These are the backslash R from, uh, uh, from uh, Windows uh, files. So, it, uh, control H was backspace, um, J was line feed, and then K is vertical tab and L is form feed. They have nothing to do with uh, arrow up and arrow right, but actually the authors of the terminal that just put it there because it was uh, quite convenient. Uh, control L is... Um, uh, form feed. Form feed means uh, just scroll the paper, the whole paper out of the printer. If you do it in terminal, it will just uh, clear the screen. So you see that with all these characters that you can type on your comp on uh, your keyboard, you are able to navigate everything, and you don't really need this small device next to each next to the, if you are working with text. Because with Wim, you just can move around and do everything with keyboard, and you don't need, uh, don't need uh, uh, a mouse. This is how Wim keyboard looks like. It, for beginners, it looks like a lot, but it means that actually with every key you can do something. And uh, Wim is like uses like something like a grammar, where you learn some operators, some movement, uh, motion uh, comments, and uh, you can do almost uh, everything with your text. Uh, if someone says, uh, "Oh, you have to juggle with H J K L." No, 
you very usually don't use them because they are all in the middle and they allow you to just to move around by one line or by one character. There are plenty other navigational or motion commands that allow you to move, just jump around uh, the whole screen, the whole text, uh, and find things uh, that you know that you, that you need uh, to uh, to work on. Uh, there is uh, not Vim alone. There is a lot of software that uh, got inspired uh, by Vim that have like Vim mode. Um, in bash in the shells uh, you have uh, the all the um, uh, the possibility to to run, to jump uh, over the words uh, in your uh, command line i3 is a, um, a window manager tiling window manager uh, there is an asterisk uh, the first thing when you install it you have to remap the uh, the jkl a semicolon to AJKL. They just move the defaults uh, to the right, which I find uh, really nonsense. So it's uh, something that you have to change. Uh, Tmux, uh, Rose Martin, who uh, explained uh, some stuff about Tmux uh, right now before my talk. Uh, Qt Browser, Vimperator, Vimium are. Qt Browser is a browser, uh, web browser that works entirely with a uh, uh, keyboard. Vimperator, Vimium, and Tridactyl, and so are extensions for Firefox or Chromium. Mod uh, and uh, Newsbouter email program that uses uh, for navigation uh, Vim keys. Uh, less uh, VIFM, VIFM is a file manager, Zatura is a PDF viewer, uh, and then there are Fe is a image viewer, and VI Paint never used it, but it should be an image editor. There is maybe something where I shouldn't, where I wouldn't really use a uh, um, keyboard only for that, and there are some more of them. And there are a lot of text editors and IDEs that offer Vim mode that works perfectly up to 50, up to 98%. 98% of time, it means that every three or four minutes, I just encounter a moment where it does something different than what I want to have, make it, to, 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 to do it. So I don't uh, really use them. Uh, learning uh, Vim is a steep curve, but it's your job. <laughs> <laughs> Probably most of you are working with computers and uh, have to I have to edit uh, take, uh, text of some sort. Um, if I want to know whether it's something worth the time, I just open this uh, XKCD uh, ch chart that uh, tells me, okay, how often do I use something and how much time I shave off. Uh, and mastering a uh, real text editor, whether Vim or Emacs or some other, um, means that I save a lot of uh, a lot of time every day because there is how there is. Another other activity that you do probably much less than editing text and where you investi invested uh, uh, much more time and it is driving a car. But prob very probably nobody here is driving, uh, spending in a car more time per day than, uh, than sitting in a front of a computer. So if you invest your time in uh, learning how to uh, drive a car and then think, okay, once I can drive a car, I can drive any car because oh, everything is the same. Uh, Sign up for Stadtmobil in Karlsruhe, and each time you sit in a new car, you will just uh, try to find out uh, how the things uh, work. So, um, spending the time to learn something uh, means, okay, you can try it out. If you have problems, you can Google, you can uh, ask uh, at Stack Overflow. Actually, at Stack Overflow, the most uh, asked question is how to quit Vim. It's not a joke anymore, sorry, I, I see it uh, too often. If you use a software tool for more than an hour a day, I absolutely recommend to read a book on it. It's not only for Vim, it's for any anything that you <coughs> use uh, on your computer because um, trying it out, okay, but uh, reading uh, an introductory book is something that will allow you to, 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 allow, to, to give the author the opportunity to tell you what this program is about. Uh, for Vim, I can recommend the author Drew Neal who is author of a Vimcast. It's like uh, video uh, sessions where he explains uh, some nice things uh, about Vim. And these two books. Uh, Practical Vim is a timeless book. It's like five, six years old, but it could be 20 years old on 20 years in the future because it uh, teaches you how to uh, use Vim, uh, the basic Vim, without any special new versions, without any um, extensions or uh, plugins. Um, the other book, uh, Modern Vim, just comes out from, uh, in print. Uh, I'm one of the technical reviewers. I can recommend it uh, because it's, uh, it speaks about, uh, about Vim 8 and NeoVim and how to turn them into real uh, IDEs. So when we are speaking about Vim 8 and NeoVim, 
Now Vim is a fork of Vim uh, 7.4. It means that there are some there is some stuff that came to Neo Vim a little bit before Vim 8. Uh, it is asynchronous. It means that if you have some plugin that uh, needs some time, like uh, linting, uh, compiling, testing, uh, or uh, auto completion, um, you it doesn't block your work, so you can just uh, go on and uh, type, and it will show you everything uh, when it is uh, ready. Uh, there is a terminal in it where you can send the comments from your text uh, editor to, to the terminal and uh, back and search in the editor uh, in the terminal. Uh, it has uh, modern defaults, so I think set no compatible is not an issue to write it in your VMRC or in the new uh, configuration file. It runs only on modern systems. Uh, it means that uh, most older systems were uh, just uh, deleted from, from the source code. Um, it uh, has some other place to, to store your configs and for Python users, or not only for, is anyone coding in Python here? Oh, nice. Uh, there is a great uh, Python plugin that allows you to write, no, a Python communicating uh, library that allows you to, pl to write uh, Python plugins, but actually NeoVim communicates with most modern um, la computer languages, programming languages, so you can, in, in JavaScript, in C, in uh, Java, where you can you can type your write your own plugins and uh, use them in uh, in Vim. This is this means that it allows you to use your uh, the programming language you know the best uh, to work on your uh, daily uh, text editing tasks. Vim your stuff. So how can Vim uh, help you to to work on your text? Uh, of course, uh, syntax highlighting, indenting, auto completion, asynchronous linting, Git communication with Git, so we can uh, commit to uh, do everything from uh, editor directly, and also you see immediately live uh, the diff uh, comparing to the uh, latest uh, commit. Um, you can search with uh, AG, with uh, IC, uh, with uh, fuzzy fi uh, file searcher. Uh, there are snippets. If you are still writing in a comp uh, programming language where you need automatically generated code, so in Python we don't do that. Uh, there is folding interaction with terminal and in, with IPython if you have uh, Python and there is spell checking. If you are writing computer programs, spell checking is uh, um, works only on uh, strings and on uh, comments. So it doesn't tell you, okay, there is a, mis a typo in your, uh, in your function because it's a name that uh, doesn't know. On the other side, uh, if you want to Python or replace Python with your programming language, your NeoVim, you can install the, um, uh, the communication library and then, uh, for example, in Python, I just import uh, the attach uh, v method from NeoVim, and then I can start a new instance of NeoVim in my uh, Python uh, program, or I can connect to an existing one. And then it's like object-oriented programming. I can tell, okay, if I start a command, uh, just give me the whole uh, buffer or give me the current line, and uh, you can even send the comments uh, to Vim, and everything is in Python or the programming language of uh, your choice. As an example, I wrote, uh, this is just how it looks like, uh, a plugin in Python uh, that allows me to type uh, easier my emails in our company. Um, this uh, I, I use MUT for emails, and when I type uh, a new email, it will just check where who I am writing this email to, and it writes hello and the names of my colleagues, one, two, or three. If it is more, it writes hello to Zaman. And if it is uh, an email address out of our company, it uh, adds uh, the signature at the end because we don't like sending uh, signatures uh, within the company. At the end, update remote plugins and the stuff works. If you want <coughs> to customize your NeoVim, in the beginning, please learn uh, Vim as it is because Vim is everywhere on any server, on, or almost on any server, and if you log in, there are not, uh, there, your plugins are not there, your uh, settings are not there, so there are the se default settings, uh, and uh, it's always a good idea just to master these and uh, use them uh, directly. Uh, if you want to customize your own Dino Vim or Vim on your computer, you can de deactivate arrow keys, I did it at the beginning, uh, just to force myself to use uh, AJKL and uh, other keys. Uh, my colleagues didn't like it because when they uh, were searching for something, in, scrolling in my text uh, or in my source code, uh, the arrow keys didn't work. You can remap keys, of course, you can shorten some comments, the appearance, how do you like uh, to have it uh, with uh, all the bars, uh, left, right, top, 
a button, how it should behave on the, in the, the plugins. Um, I could show you now my VimRC, but I have only four, uh, 20 minutes left, so it's not uh, really an option. Um, <laughs> um, actually, you, th this, this is not something that, okay, I'm going to uh, NeoVim and give me your VimRC, I want your VimRC. No. This is not, uh, VimRC is something that you have to build up yourself. Just add one line, try it out, and if uh, you don't want to mm, break your uh, configuration, git your dot files. And uh, then you have just one master and uh, branch uh, with your commits. And if you want to try something new, you can try it out. If it doesn't work, you just can always uh, uh, check out back to your uh, last uh, working uh, version. Because you actually you shouldn't put any lines into your VMRC that you don't understand. It is not only VMRC, it is any configuration file. Dot files are your technical CV. It is something that you create your whole career, that you can take with you if you change your computers, your, your uh, careers, your companies, and um, you, they will just come with you, and it is the way how you interact with your computer. So you uh, write your dot files, you get them, and then uh, share them with some private uh, repository somewhere, and uh, you you have always them with you, and uh, they will work for you on work or home computer. Um, usually, you could create a dot file and then symbolically link it to all your um, files in the system where you want. But I found somewhere a very nice way how to do it. I create an alias that I name config, and tell, I create a bare repository in my home directory that is not called dot git but it is called uh, dot, dot .files, um, because if it is .git and I am uh, in the terminal, uh, in the shell, at every enter it will just check compare, because uh, my uh, Z shell sees, oh, there is a .git, so it's a repository, I have to check all your files in your home directory and uh, compare it with the git, and your files are not uh, versioned, checked, and uh, there are some changes, and it will be slow because your home directory is huge. Um, if you create uh, an extra dot, uh, git dir, like this uh, dot files, it will never see it. And if you create your uh, alias named config, uh, you can always with config, you have the whole power of uh, git, and uh, it looks uh, into the right directory. The work tree is uh, your home directory, so if I'm in my home directory and I do config status, it shows me what, uh, what has changed, uh, and I can commit, uh, push, uh, do everything. Uh, another thing that, okay, I told that uh, you have to create these dot files uh, as a bare uh, git um, repository. And the second line is very important with this config status uh, show untracked files. No, because you only want to track the files you want to track. You don't want to see all the other files in your home directory. Uh, when in, with this line, if you do config st status, it will compare just the few, your vimrc, z shell, rc, uh, and those few files you want to track and ignore all the rest. And then you can, of course, uh, you have to re re add a remote, uh, whether you put it on GitHub, uh, GitLab, uh, in a private directory, uh, repository, you can also use uh, Uberspace or some other uh, service where you can um, share your, um, uh, your dot .files uh, between your computers. Uh, GitHub is usually public, there are many uh, public uh, good dot files. It is your decision whether you want to publish it uh, for the whole world. And then you commit, you branch, and that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miro, for this really packed talk. Uh, but unfortunately, we uh, still have some time for questions. So, uh, ah, there's directly the first question here. So, one addendum: the the rub key sends an ASCII delete. So, uh, character 127. That was one of the questions. And the other thing I would add to the: uh, if you spend more than one hour on a tool and read a book, and I would start with the man page of the tool before I buy a book. But otherwise, I agree. Yeah. I'll be and around if you have some more yeah. questions. So. Yeah, if, if you don't have uh, your questions right now, um, that means that uh, the presentation was 
self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, and Miro will still be here, so you can ask your uh, questions in person. Oh, there's still another one. Uh, do you have a method for writing, like for example, Japanese characters, or? Would I have a method too? Uh, for writing Japanese characters or, uh, or Chinese? Japanese, no. No. No Chinese uh, on my cell phone, but uh, Japanese, no. Okay, but you don't have any solution for that. Uh, I never wrote uh, Japanese. Okay, you can do it in Emacs, by the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's an input method called Kotoeri to type Japanese. Another question. Thanks. And how are you doing the Chinese? You said you're typing Chinese? Because I tried and I couldn't make it. Uh, uh, from time to time when I have to type something, it's a uh, black hole? On, on cell phone, I mean. Mm. Black hole? Black hole. P-L-E-C-O. It's a dictionary that allows you also to type with your f swipe with your finger. Ah, okay. And uh, it has the whole dictionary in it, so it shows you immediately the context. But okay. I wrote very little Chinese in my life, so... Okay, thanks. Now, we all know that Linux is the dominating operating system, but do you have any suggestions for using this on others, like Windows or Mac OS? For example, uh, I mean, so Vim, the comp is, Vim, Vim is easy, but Vim the Compose key, for example. But, uh, sorry. The Compose key, for example. The Compose key. Uh, Google for Compose key and the name of your obscure operating system. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, for Mac OS, uh, there is certainly something, and for Windows, I, I'm sure as well, but never, never use Mac OS and uh, Windows in the last century, so <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I propose that maybe after this talk we could set up a, a little wiki where everyone posts his config file and we start discussions which one is the best. Uh, but uh, I think uh, for today we can uh, call it a day and thank you again for this thank talk. You.